Hi, Jeremy Simon here with 3D Universe. It's been a while since my last video, and that's because I've been very busy working with a very talented team of folks coming up with a new and improved design for a 3D printable respirator mask. And I'm very pleased to be able to introduce this to you today. This is still a work in progress, and we're still making changes and updates, but we felt it was time to release this to the public so that folks can start uh, making these if they don't have any other better options available. So this is the BECM version 1, which stands for the Buffalo Enable Crisis Mask. So most of the people that were on the team are based out in the Buffalo area, as well as some of the volunteers from the Enable Volunteer Community. That's where the name comes from. So I'm going to be taking you through this design, talking to you about how it evolved, some of the changes that we made, how you can produce these, and uh, other such details. So let's get started. This is derived from the Montana mask design, which was created by uh, Dr. Dusty Richardson, Dr. Spencer Zog, and Colton Zog. I hope I'm pronouncing those names right. Anyway, they did great work on the Montana mask, and after testing a number of different designs, the team I've been working with decided that that Montana mask was the most promising of the designs out there. However, we did feel that we could make some significant improvements on it. For example, when printed, uh, the Montana mask design we felt was a, a little bit too uh, shallow and it was sort of pressing down on the bridge of the nose and uh, didn't really leave enough room in front of the mouth. So we actually extended the scaling outwards in the Z axis, because it's printed this way. So we extended that Z scaling uh, to about 130%. And what that did is it allowed more room for that bridge of the nose and a little bit more room in front of the mouth without compromising the quality of the seal on the face because the shape of that edge it remains the same. And so we felt that that offered a uh, significant improvement. The uh, other change that we made was that we added in this protective grid on the front face of the mask. And that came from discussion with uh, several of the folks in our group who are medical professionals explaining that when these are being used in a hospital environment or in a uh, surgery room, there's a lot of things happening. There's a lot of uh, hands moving around and it's not hard for some, somebody to hit the front of a mask and potentially push that filter through from the outside. And so we wanted a little bit more of a protective mechanism to prevent the filter from being able to push through. So the filter frame insert piece that goes on the inside has a uh, cross grid pattern on it, as you can see. And the grid that we put on the mask itself complements that so that when these are put together, as you can see, that grid pattern provides a nice level of reinforcement for the filter that's going in there from both sides while also minimizing the amount of uh, surface area of the filter that we are covering up. So that uh, offers some additional protection. The uh, filter frame insert piece has uh, a flange around the edge, which provides uh, a little bit of extra protection, both to prevent you from pushing it in too far, as well as providing some coverage around the edge of the filter, uh, just in case there were any tiny gaps there. We also have uh, added a, a little bit more of a mechanism for uh, getting a tight seal on the filter frame insert. You'll notice that the filter frame has these little dimples on the sides uh, and what we did was we added on the inner uh, sides of the mask where this goes, we added corresponding little divots that those sort of slip into and sort of pinch the filter material into those uh, spots. So it holds the filter material very nice and tightly and uh, seems to provide a, a, a very uh, strong uh, fit. Another thing that we changed is the strap connection points. We moved those down a little bit because that allowed room for those who wish to add the gasket uh, mechanism on the outside. Since we're using a C-channel gasket that comes down over both sides, we wanted to allow room for that gasket material when that is being used. So we moved those connection points down a little bit to allow for that. Now we also created this mask in five different sizes. So this is available in an extra small, small, medium, large, and extra large. Each of the masks has an indicator on the inside. So this is a large, there's an L there. There's a similar indicator for each of the different sizes. 
the filter frame inserts are also uh, scaled in those same five different sizes. And there are little dots on the filter frames that indicate the size. There's anywhere from zero through four dots, with the zero dot being uh, an extra small, and then the four dots would be the extra large with everything there in between. Uh, the scaling was handled by analyzing databases of facial uh, geometries. So we basically went through huge quantities of facial uh, geometry data in terms of measurements of the width and the length of faces, and we did uh, analysis and averaging to come up with the various uh, um, typical sizes of facial features, and we use that to come up with these five standardized sizes, and the models are pre-scaled and ready to use in all five sizes. There's also a separate set of models for uh, printing the mask in TPU versus printing in a rigid material like PLA. The reason for that is that the TPU version of the mask is scaled just slightly smaller because there is a little bit of flex to it. So when you push in that filter frame, it, it, the mask is able to expand just a tiny bit, whereas when the mask is printed in a rigid material, you don't have that flexibility. So the scaling is just slightly different. It's just about 1% different in the scaling. So you'll want to use the appropriate model uh, based on whether you're printing in TPU or PLA or another rigid material. We recommend printing the mask in TPU whenever possible. This is a flexible material and it provides for a really nice tight seal on the face. Uh, if you don't have the ability to print TPU, you can also print this with a rigid material like PLA. However, in that case, you will want to line the edge of the mask with some kind of a gasket material like a, what we see here. This is a C-channel gasket material that can go over the edges of the mask and can be attached there and that will provide a better seal and extra comfort. I found that that isn't really necessary when this is printed in TPU. It fits quite nicely and is fairly comfortable to wear, but the, uh, the gasket material can be added if you feel that's needed. And it's definitely recommended if you print this with a rigid material because you'll get a much better fit that way because the rigid material doesn't really form to your face the way a TPU material does. Uh, to put this together, you basically just print the mask in one piece, uh, standing up on the printer like this. Uh, so the whole body of the mask is printed in TPU. The filter frame insert is printed in a rigid material like PLA or Tough PLA or PET-G. The uh, filter material uh, that we are using is a MERV-15 rated material, which is essentially the equivalent level of protection as what you get in an N95 mask. Uh, this is a material that uh, we purchased from McMaster Carr, and we actually purchased it in the form of uh, bag air filters. It's a very large uh, set of bags that we cut apart, and from one of these bag filters that you can get for $50, you can produce about 2,500 of these 2.5 inch squares that you need for this mask. So one of these squares lays inside over the opening, and you take the filter frame insert and push it in on top of that filter all the way in and it creates a nice tight seal and holds that filter in place very well so that you can't really push it in from the outside very easily at all even if it gets bumped it's not going to just pop out and uh, so that part is very easy to put together then all you need to do is, is add a strap. Now I'm currently waiting for my quarter inch elastic strapping to arrive. So in this case, I'm just using a two millimeter elastic cord, but the quarter inch elastic strap would be preferable. You can also use all kinds of other materials if you don't have that available. I've seen people using uh, shoelaces, long shoelaces to loop through here. Uh, you can use um, uh, other thicknesses of elastic. You can use rubber bands. So you can have whatever you uh, happen to have available, but ideally it would be a, a quarter inch elastic strapping. We recommend looping this through. Uh, so as you can see, this end hangs loose. It loops through one port, up through the other, loops around, back down, so that you have one continuous piece of elastic that's going all the way through. And then you have one piece on the top that would loop over the back of the head, and then the bottom straps simply tie around the back of your neck. So uh, that's really all there is to putting one of these together. We are still working on uh, testing. We're having extensive testing done by the medical folks that are part of this team. Um, and that includes both fit testing as well as permeability testing to, to test the effectiveness of the filtration. 
but all of the preliminary feedback has been very positive and we feel fairly confident that this is a solution that is significantly better than nothing to say the least and we feel like it does offer some improvements over the existing designs that are out there. So we wanted to put this into the public's hands so that people can start producing these and we will update our documentation with the latest results of our testing as those are available. Uh, sources for all of these materials are also included in our documentation, so we'll have links and part numbers to all the different materials that you might want to uh, get in order to produce these in some scale. And um, uh, we will also be updating the documentation as we go forward to provide additional details, assembly instructions, cleaning and disinfecting instructions. Uh, right now, uh, the whole mask, uh, you can remove the filter, the whole mask body can be dipped in some kind of a dif disinfecting solution. Uh, a lot of hospitals are using a 1.5% hydrogen peroxide solution. Uh, you can also use uh, warm soapy water. So uh, I'll leave it to the medical professionals to determine the optimal means of disinfecting, but uh, there are a number of methods available and we'll be adding those suggestions to our documentation as testing proceeds. Uh, I want to give a big thanks to the tremendous team of folks that uh, helped work on this. This team was made up of about 50 people, including uh, quite a few medical professionals, uh, 3D printing experts, materials experts, filtration experts, uh, all, all kinds of different um, backgrounds that uh, brought their, their time and energy together to uh, contribute to this effort. So a big thanks to that whole team that made this possible. It's been uh, really wonderful to be able to work with such a talented team and to be able to bring something like this to the public as an open source design that others can make and continue to improve upon. Uh, we will be providing further updates as we proceed, so keep an eye on uh, the documentation uh, for further uh, updates there, and keep an eye on this YouTube channel for uh, additional videos. Thanks for watching. Stay safe.